Do you remember the story of Prophet Yaqub alayhi salam that I told you the other day? If you do, then you would know that he had two wives, Rachel and Leah. Prophet Yaqub loved Rachel the most, and she gave birth to two sons. The eldest was called Yusuf alayhi salam, and the younger one was called Bin Yamin. Prophet Yaqub had 12 sons in total, but he loved Yusuf and Binyamin the most. Prophet Yusuf السلام, was a handsome and smart boy when he was young, with polite habits and good manners. He had an excellent personality as well. Prophet Yaqub السلام, had a deep affection for Yusuf more than his other children. His brothers soon began to feel jealous of him. They wanted to get rid of Yusuf one way or the other. The story of Yusuf alayhi salam starts with the story of his dream. One night, the little boy had a real strange dream. When he woke up, he felt strange. So, he ran straight to his father and told him about his dream. Oh, father, I saw a dream. I saw eleven stars, the sun and moon prostrating before me. His father listened attentively to the little boy's dream, and when he was finished, the father's face shone with joy. The old prophet realized that the dream meant fulfilling a prophecy. He told Yusuf that one day his eleven brothers and himself would bow down before him. The little boy did not understand what it meant. His father assured him that he will understand it later, and he also warned him not to talk about this to his brothers. The ten older brothers of Yusuf السلام, were already jealous of Yusuf and Binyamin. Satan, who always loved trickery and deception, was now sowing seeds of discord between Yusuf and his brothers. The jealousy soon blinded their hearts. Our father loves Yusuf and Binyamin more than us, said one of the brothers. That's true, said the other. We must do something about it. We are older and stronger than him, said another. Our father is clearly long to love him more than us. We should kill him and get rid of him. I have another idea, said the eldest brother, who didn't want to kill Yusuf. Let us throw him in a well. Someone would find him and take him along as a slave. Without realizing that Satan was playing with them, they decided to go ahead with their plans. They asked their father to let Yusuf go with them while they worked in the fields. But Yaqub was scared. I am worried that the wolves might catch him, he said. Don't worry, father, said one brother. We will take good care of him. Even though Yaqub suspected something was wrong, he eventually let them take Yusuf with them as well. The brothers took Yusuf far away from home. As they neared the well, one brother held Yusuf from behind. Yusuf السلام, was startled. What are you doing? He asked them. Soon, the other brothers joined in holding Yusuf. Yusuf struggled to free himself, but the brothers held him tightly. Then, one of them removed his shirt. And once they removed his shirt, they threw him down into the deep well. Help me, my brothers! Yusuf السلام, cried, I have done nothing wrong. Please don't leave me here. But the brothers returned home, leaving the young boy in the well. On their way back, they caught a ram and killed it. Then they drenched Yusuf's shirt in its blood. Ha <laughs> ha, now we can show this shirt as proof to father. We can tell him that the wolves took him. The brothers then returned home weeping. When Yaqub asked them why they were crying, 
They replied, Father, wolves took our little brother. It was just as you warned us, said one of them. Then they showed him Yusuf's shirt, drenched in blood. But Yaqub quickly realized that they were lying. He saw the shirt was not ripped anywhere. He knew that when a wolf attacks someone, it rips the person's clothing. The old prophet was a very wise man indeed. I know you are lying, he said. You have made up this story. Prophet Yaqub had no option but to trust God and turn to him with hope and patience. Deep in the well, Yusuf was terrified and he clung to a ledge in the well. That night, both father and son turned to God in the deep darkness of the night. A mixture of hope and fear filled their hearts. The next day, a group of travelers going to Egypt stopped camped near the well. They decided to draw some water from the well. As they lowered their bucket into the well, Yusuf السلام, reached out and clung to the rope. The man was surprised by the weight of the bucket. He was shocked and surprised when they saw a child clinging to the rope. He called his companions for help. They were all amazed at the sight of this beautiful child who stood before them. What good news! they cried together. They were overjoyed as they knew that they could get a lot of money by selling this handsome boy. Not realizing the significance of this little boy, they chained him and took him to the slave markets of Egypt. The news of this beautiful boy spread fast and people gathered in the hundreds to see him. It was then that Aziz, who was the chief minister, saw him. He sensed something special with the boy, so he paid a handsome amount to the traders and bought the young prophet. This way, God placed Yusuf السلام, into the home of the second most important person in Egypt. When they reached the palace, Aziz ordered the chains binding Yusuf السلام, to be removed. The young prophet was happy and relieved when he heard this. The chief minister then asked his wife to make his stay comfortable at the palace. Aziz promised the prophet that he will never be ill-treated at the palace and warned him to never betray his trust. It was clear that God was in control of all the affairs here. It was not long ago that the little boy had to survive a whole night in a well surrounded by darkness. He was now living with one of the most powerful men in Egypt. Yusuf السلام, grew into manhood in the house of Aziz. As the Prophet grew up, God blessed him with wisdom and knowledge. The chief minister recognized these qualities and therefore put him in charge of the household affairs. Everyone who knew him, including the wife of Aziz, Zuleikha, acknowledged the young man's beauty, honesty, and nobility. She watched him grow into a handsome young man and became more attracted to him as days passed. The Prophet's beauty soon became the talk of the town. People thought him to be the most beautiful man alive. Zuleikha was in love with the Prophet and she couldn't resist her temptations anymore. So one day, she closed the doors of her bedroom and tried to seduce the Prophet. But Yusuf السلام, resisted her advances and sought help from God. I will never betray your husband, said the Prophet. He has been good to me and treated me with respect. But the Prophet's refusal only increased her passions. He tried to flee and she raced him to the door. Zuleikha reached for his shirt and tore it from the back. At that moment, the door opened and Aziz walked in. Immediately, even without a moment's hesitation, 
Zuleikha tried to turn the situation around. She cried to her husband, What is the punishment for one who had an evil design against your wife? It was she who already tried to grab me, the prophet tried to deny her. One of their relatives suddenly appeared and offered a solution. If his shirt was torn from the back, which it was, it meant that he was trying to escape, and she was running after him, tearing the shirt from the back. There was solid proof now. The chief minister was in a dilemma. He apologized to the prophet for the wife's behavior. He then asked the prophet to remain silent on the matter. The prophet obliged and didn't say a word to anyone about the incident. But the news of this incident somehow got leaked and it became the talking point of the whole town. The women of the city began to talk about Zulaikha's infatuation with her slave. People laughed at her wherever she went. In the last episode, we saw how Zulaikha, the wife of Chief Minister Aziz, got infatuated with Prophet Yusuf salam, and tried to seduce him. The Prophet, being a firm follower of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, resisted her advances. When her husband arrived, she lied to him, saying that the Prophet had tried to attack her. Fortunately, one of their relatives arrived at the scene, and after evaluating the proofs, he concluded that Zuleikha was lying. Aziz apologized to the Prophet and asked him to keep quiet about the whole incident. But news of this incident spread across town, and people started making fun of Zuleikha wherever she went. The women in town asked themselves how could she desire a slave and put her reputation in jeopardy? Zuleikha couldn't bear this insult anymore. She decided to teach them a lesson by showing how irresistible the Prophet was. She then came up with a plan. She wrote a letter to all the noble women in town. She invited all of them for lunch at her palace. The women arrived. There was a beautiful table before them. Zuleikha then asked one of her maids to hand them knives to cut the fruit. Then suddenly, Zuleikha started speaking. Listen, everyone, she said. I have heard of those who say that I am in love with my slave. At once, everyone stopped what they were doing and fixed their gaze on the chief minister's wife. I admit that he is a charming fellow. I do not deny that I love him, as I have loved him for a very long time. The women present were stunned. They did not expect Zuleikha to be so open about the affair. Zuleikha then started telling them about her infatuation. By now, everyone had finished the dinner and the guests started cutting the fruit using the knife. It was then that Zuleikha summoned the Prophet. Prophet Yusuf salam, walked into the hall gracefully with his gaze lowered. Raise your head, she asked. When the Prophet raised his head, the guests were dumbfounded. The Prophet's face was shining with angelic beauty. It reflected the innocence in his soul. They looked at him in wonder, without realizing that they were in fact cutting their palms. They were so absorbed by the angelic vision of the Prophet that they were bleeding. They were not feeling any pain at all. This is not a mortal, said one of them. He is an angel, said another. It was then that Zuleikha spoke to them. Look at your hands. The women were shocked to find that they were bleeding. This is the man because of whom you are blaming me for. I do not deny that I tried to seduce him. Look at your hands. Don't you understand that you too have been enchanted by him? I tried to seduce him once, but he refused. If he refuses to obey my order again, then he shall be cast into prison. The Prophet remained calm and said, I would rather go to prison than commit a sin. Saying this, he lowered his gaze and slowly left the room. Zuleikha was ashamed 
She knew that if the prophet remained free, people would mock at her. So that night, she tried to convince her husband. Aziz loved the prophet like his own son, but he also wanted to avoid scandals. Even though he knew that the prophet was innocent, he ordered the arrest and imprisonment of Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam. The life of the prophet is a perfect example of patience in the face of adversity. Throughout his life so far, the prophet faced trials and tribulations with complete trust in God. Yet, here he was once again in an extremely difficult situation. It was now time for the prophet to face his third test. The prophet spent most of his time in prayers while in prison. It was during this time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with the ability to interpret dreams. And pretty soon, everyone in the prison realized the greatness of the Prophet, and they all loved and respected him. He shared the cell with two other men. One was the cupbearer of the king, and the other was the king's cook. These two men recognized his piety and righteousness. The men woke up from their sleep. They are worried and scratched their heads. These men were having vivid dreams for the last few nights. So they decided to seek help from the Prophet. I saw a dream in which I was pressing wine for the king, said the first man. I dreamed about birds eating bread from my head, said the other. I will tell you the meaning of these dreams by midday, said the Prophet. Then the Prophet prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking his help to interpret the dreams. Then he called the cupbearer of the king and told him, This is what my Lord has told me. You will soon be left free and will return to your service to the king. Then he called the cook. Your dream means that you will be crucified soon. Yusuf alayhi salam then told the cupbearer and requested him to remind the king about him. The man thanked him and promised that he will inform the king about the prophet. Like the prophet predicted, the cupbearer soon returned to the king's service, but Satan started playing his tricks. He made the cupbearer forget about Yusuf alayhi salam, and the prophet remained in prison for a few more years. It was during that time that the king of Egypt started getting strange dreams. The king dreamed he was standing on the banks of the Nile River. As he stood there, seven fat cows emerged from the river. This was followed by seven lean cows. The seven lean ones then swallowed the fat cows. In the next dream, he saw seven green ears of grain growing on the banks of the river Nile. They suddenly disappeared into the mud, and on the same spot grew seven dry ears of grain. The king was shocked, and he woke up terrified. He summoned his sorcerers, priests, and ministers, and asked them to interpret his dream. Don't worry, your majesty. It is just a nightmare, said his minister. He is right. It is just a dream, said the sorcerer. Like that, everyone arrived at the conclusion that there was nothing to worry about. It was then that the cupbearer remembered Prophet Yusuf salam from the prison. He told the king about the prophet and he rushed to the prison. He told the prophet about the king's dream and asked him to interpret it. Prophet Yusuf salam sought help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he explained the meaning of the dream to the cupbearer. It was like this. For the next seven years, the kingdom will have a rich harvest, and there will be more than enough food for all. This will be followed by seven years of drought, and there will be no water, and there will be scarcity of food all over the kingdom. When the cupbearer informed the interpretation to the king, he was really impressed. He asked the Prophet to be set free immediately. The Prophet was finally set free. When he arrived at the palace, the king was stunned to see this handsome young man. 
the king decided to test the prophet's knowledge and asked him many questions. The prophet remained calm and gave brilliant answers to each of the king's questions. The king realized that the prophet was very intelligent. The king then asked the prophet about the dream he had, and he wanted to know if there was any solution for this. The prophet advised the king to start planning right away. He asked the king to store the harvest from the years of abundance so that it can be used during the times of drought. The king was really impressed. He decided that no other man would be able to do this task better than the prophet. So he appointed the prophet as the controller of granaries. Prophet Yusuf السلام, was responsible to guard the harvest for the tough times ahead. With this appointment, the prophet became one of the most important people in Egypt. The wheels of time had changed by now. During the rich years of harvest, the prophet took care of cultivation, harvest, and storage of crops. He carefully saved the food for the drought that lay ahead. The king was really satisfied with the work of the prophet. The king had admired him and sought his advice on many other issues as well. Time passed. The years of drought arrived. It didn't rain for months, and water dried up everywhere. The plants and animals started dying all around Egypt and other nations. But the prophet managed the affairs of Egypt so well that there was enough grain to feed the people. People from neighboring lands flocked to Egypt, where the prophet was selling food at a fair price. The drought had affected the land where Yaqub and his sons lived. They had been starving for days without anything to eat. When they heard that grains were distributed in Egypt, they decided to go there and try their luck. The whole of Egypt and neighboring lands were affected by the drought. When the brothers heard that grains were being distributed in Egypt, the brothers of Prophet Yusuf السلام, decided to try their luck. They traveled for many days through the desert, and they finally arrived in Egypt. Look at that, said one brother. It must be there that they are distributing the grains. In the meantime, Prophet Yusuf السلام, was overseeing the distribution of grains. Thank you, Yusuf, said the king. It is only because of you that Egypt was saved from the famine. The prophet told him that he only did what God asked him to do. It was then that he noticed his brothers standing in the queue. He immediately recognized them, and he was so happy. But the brothers didn't recognize the prophet, even though he was standing right before them. The prophet then thought about what his brothers did to him. He thought about that scary night he had to spend inside that deep, dark well. He decided to invite them over to his palace. When the brothers arrived, the prophet treated them respectfully. He asked them questions about their family and homeland. We are eleven brothers, son of a noble prophet, they said. We come from Canaan. But I count only ten of you here, the prophet said. Are you lying to me? We are not lying. Our youngest brother is at home, attending to our father's needs. When the prophet heard of this, his heart longed to meet his younger brother, Bin Yamin. The prophet asked his men to hand them bags of grains and said, If what you say is the truth, then bring your youngest brother and I'll double your rations. But if you do not bring him to me, then you better not try entering Egypt again. He warned them. The eldest brother assured him that they would return with their youngest brother after seeking their father's approval. The brothers thanked the prophet and returned home. Father, please let Bin Yamin travel with us. We were denied some supplies because Bin Yamin wasn't with us. The controller of granaries has promised to give us extra rations if you let him come with us. But Yaqub 
didn't agree at first. How will I trust you knowing what you did to Yusuf? Once again, the brothers promised to take care of the youngest brother. The old prophet had complete trust in God and finally gave them permission to take Benjamin. He asked them to swear an oath in God's name to protect their younger brother. Allah is witness to your pledge, he reminded them before they left. The brothers thanked their father and left for Egypt, taking Benjamin along with them. Then they went to the palace of Yusuf alayhi salam to get the promised provisions. The Prophet welcomed them happily and prepared a feast for them. During the feast, the Prophet took Benjamin aside and told him, Benjamin, I am your brother who was lost. Fate has finally brought us together. Benjamin was so happy to meet his brother. He cried tears of joy. Shh, said the Prophet. This must remain a secret. You should not tell anyone about this for a few more days. Benjamin agreed, and he embraced his brother. The Prophet then gave the brothers provisions as he had promised, and then he asked one of his men to secretly place a golden cup in Benjamin's bag. The brothers did not suspect anything. They thanked the Prophet for his generosity and set out for their journey. But suddenly, one of the soldiers stopped them. Stop there, you thieves! The soldier shouted. The brothers were confused. They didn't know what the soldier was talking about. I'm sorry, asked one brother. Have you lost anything? He asked. We believe that you have stolen the king's golden cup. But we don't know anything about it, said another brother. Then another soldier arrived, and he was instructed to ask the brothers the following question. What punishment would you give for a thief? He asked them. As per the law of Yaqub, the one who steals must be taken as a slave. The Prophet did not want to punish them under the laws of Egypt. He wanted to take the opportunity to keep his brother with him. He longed to meet his father too, and that's why he planned this whole incident. We shall apply your law instead of the Egyptian law. If we find that you were the ones who stole the cup, and the person who stole it would be taken as slave. The brothers agreed, and the soldiers started searching their bags. As the Prophet planned, the golden cup was found amongst Benjamin's bags. You! You will be taken as a slave! The brothers were shocked. The brothers were afraid of returning to their father without his beloved son. They pleaded to the Prophet, O oh, minister, take one of us instead! We promised our father to take care of our younger brother. Please let him go back to Canaan. But the Prophet refused all their proposals and took Benjamin to the palace. One of the brothers decided to stay in Egypt to watch over Benjamin, while the others went to Canaan to face their father. The brothers arrived home, and they gave the bad news to their father. Oh father, your son Benjamin has stolen... You may ask the people of the town and they will tell you, we are telling the truth. But the old prophet had heard all this before, and this time he refused to believe them. He turned away from them and went to his room. Even though the prophet trusted God completely, he behaved just as any father would under the circumstances. He was overcome with grief and wept uncontrollably. The Prophet wept continually for many days and nights until he became ill and lost his sight. The brothers could not watch their father suffer any more, so one day they said to him, O oh father, why are you destroying yourself in this way? pleaded his sons. I complain of my grief and sorrow to Allah. I know from Allah what you do not know, the Prophet replied. He then asked his sons to go to Egypt once again and not to give up hope. The brothers once again arrived at the palace and pleaded with the Prophet to set their brother free. Prophet Yusuf could not bear 
to see them suffer like this any more, even if they had betrayed him. He looked at his family and could not keep his secret any longer. Do you know what you did with Yusuf when you were ignorant? He asked them. It was then that the brothers recognized Yusuf a.s. They knew that only their brother knew about their secret. Are you our brother Yusuf? They asked him. I am Yusuf, he replied, and bin Yamin is my brother. Allah has been good to us. Whoever fears Allah and is patient, he always rewards them. The brothers were now afraid. They remembered what they had done in the past, and they thought the Prophet would punish them. We have sinned, brother, they said. Allah has certainly preferred you more than us. May Allah forgive you, said the Prophet. He is the most merciful of the merciful. The Prophet then embraced his brothers and wept with joy. Prophet Yusuf salam, could not leave Egypt, as he had many responsibilities. So he asked his brothers to leave without him. He gave them his shirt and said, Take this shirt of mine and throw it over my father's face. He will recover his sight. Then bring me all of your family. The brothers agreed and left for Canaan. It is said that Prophet Yaqub could smell Yusuf's shirt even before the brothers reached the house. He stood outside his house and said, I can smell Yusuf in the air. The women in the house thought he had gone mad. The brothers finally arrived, and the old prophet was waiting for them. I smell Yusuf in the air, said the prophet. Is it real or am I dreaming? He asked them. The bearer of the good news walked toward the prophet and placed the shirt of Yusuf alayhi salam over his face. It was a miracle. As soon as the shirt was placed, he got his sight back. The brothers knelt before the Prophet and sought his forgiveness. I will ask the Lord to forgive you. He is all forgiving and all merciful, replied the Prophet. Then the whole family left for Egypt to meet Yusuf alayhi salam. The Prophet's happiness knew no bounds when he saw his father after such a long time. Then Yusuf salam placed his father on the throne. It was then that his father and all his brothers prostrated before Yusuf salam. This is the dream that I saw when I was young, said Yusuf salam. I saw eleven stars, the sun and the moon bowing down to me. My Lord has made it true. The king happily agreed to have all the family of the Prophet settle down in Egypt. The great power and responsibility did not distract the Prophet from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He remembered and worshipped Allah all the time. The Prophet did not want to die the death of a king. He did not like to be gathered around the people of royalty. He wanted to die the death of a slave to Allah and to be gathered around the righteous. Yusuf salam, at the time of his death asked his brothers to bury him beside his forefathers. So when he passed away, he was mummified and placed in a coffin until a suitable time to be taken out of Egypt. It is said that he died at the age of 110.